Christina Dillabo reporting on behalf of the Western Jurisdiction with your general conference update in Charlotte, North Carolina. This is day five. Let's get into it. Bishop Cedric Bridgeforth of the Greater Northwest Episcopal Area served as second presiding bishop during this morning's plenary alongside Bishop Cynthia Moore Kokoy of the Pittsburgh Episcopal Area. Nominations for various committees were voted on today, including Lori Day, Aaron Hawkins, Angela Brown, and Luan Vu Tran from the Western Jurisdiction who were nominated for the Judicial Council. Stay tuned for next week's recap to find out the results. Now, here's some notable items from the first week of General Conference. On April 22nd, Mountain Sky Episcopal Area Bishop Karen Olivito was one of the participants at the Breaking Barriers AIDS Conference at First UMC in Charlotte, North Carolina. Then on April 25th, a peace rally for Gaza drew hundreds of delegates, bishops, and observers to rally for peace. In case you missed it, Elizabeth Ingram Schindler shares why we wear black on Thursdays. So the general conference uh, and really the work up the Commission on the Status of Enrolled Women asked us to wear black uh, to bring awareness to the number of people, particularly but not only women, who experience personal violence, uh, some on a daily or regular basis. And so that the World Council of Churches has a big campaign going called Thursdays in Black. And we're participating in that as a general conference today to raise awareness um, and to say we see what's happening and we want to work to make it stop. Still to come this week, a portion of the proposed changes to the social principles passed on the consent calendar last week. There are two thirds in the affirmative and the motion is adopted. The consent calendar is approved. So of particular interest this week will be the discussion and potential amendments around the three R's the revised social principles, the removal of harmful language from the Book of Discipline, and the remaining items around regionalism. As we begin week two, let's see what our Western jurisdiction folks are looking forward to. I'm actually really hopeful and excited about next week as we go into this work where we pray and hope that we have holy conversations on regionalization and we pass it so we can live into being the worldwide church which means that we're going to be an inclusive church, which means that we're going to be able to use the social principles to live into the ways we are in our society, in our communities. And as we do so, may we love one another in all those ways and walk the way that we call ourselves United Methodists. I'm hopeful that the momentum that was begun in the first week of collaboration and unity and listening continues into the second week as we come to the plenary floor so that we as an entire body can hear one another and can make decisions that are good for the entire worldwide United Methodist Connection. And so we're really excited to remove the harmful language, get all of that on the consent calendar, and we're very excited to pass a budget so we can guide this church into the next iteration, fund it, and I'm very excited to make sure that we get our Judicial Council and University Senate nominations in and we ensure fair and diverse representation, especially from the West. I hope that we continue to be able to work with joy, as this has been so evident this week. I am hopeful that peace and understanding will prevail as the body deliberates in debate on the petition that will be brought forth to the floor. I am hopeful that the Holy Spirit will continue to lead us as the Holy Spirit has been with us all throughout the week. Hi friends, my name is Mary Klain. I'm one of the reserve delegates for the Desert Southwest Annual Conference. And what I'm looking forward to next week is the completion of the process of removing anti-LGBTQIA plus language from the Book of Discipline. Uh, it's been 50 years in coming, a, more, a little more than 50 years, and since 1972, and it looks like we're gonna be able to complete that process. And for me as a, a queer married clergy woman, uh, married to uh, my wife, um, this means an, a lot. And now today's prayer. On behalf of the delegation, I wanna thank you, the members of the Western Jurisdiction, 
for trusting us to be here and to lead the church going forward. Let us pray. Gracious God, guide us in our journey in Charlotte that our work may be a reflection of your love. Bless our community, our leaders, and all those in need. Grant us wisdom, courage, and strength to be your hands and feet in the world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.